Rock Nation. The story of OJ. Oh dear, yes, here we go. Oh, okay. It's interesting already. OJ, oh my. I take it we're not talking about orange juice? This is Jay Z, right? Having a party it says burlesque. That's old school. Light nigga, dark nigga, but we're not supposed to use that word, are we? Light nigga, dark nigga, yeah, that's a little offensive. Pole nigga, house nigga, feel nigga, still nigga. <laughs> the watermelon, <laughs> great stereotype. OJ like, I'm not black, I'm OJ. Yeah, we all know that story. Okay. House nigga. Eh, I like animation, but I don't know where he's going with this. Sean Cutlery. Oh, this is interesting. Going back to all the days. I could have bought a place in Dumbo before it was Dumbo for like two million. Oh dear, oh dear. That same building today is worth 25 million. Guess how I'm feeling. <laughs> I don't know how to react to this. I just find the word offensive. They've got everything negative about African Americans in here. Well, I'm getting the point here. No matter what I do. I, I'm going to be called the N-word. Oh, yeah, it's offensive. Well, this is kind of scary to me. Want to know what's more important than throwing away money at a strip club? I've never seen anything like this. This is really interesting. You ever wonder why Jewish people own all the property in America? This is how they did it. And he's been very criticized for that line. Financial freedom, my only hope. Oh, dear. Fuck living rich and dying broke. I don't, I don't like this kind of stuff. I don't think it's necessary. I can deal with it because it's a black guy singing this crap. But uh, I still really don't like it a lot. I bought some artwork for one million. Two years later, that shit worth two million. Two years later, that shit worth eight million. Wow. I can't wait to get this shit to my children. Y'all here still taking advances, huh? Me and my niggas taking real I just don't uh, like it. I don't like it at all. And I think it's uh, degrading. Uh, I guess basic to everyday living and so forth. I just don't like the, the terms he's using. Still Hey! Oh. Well, we're using the N-word now. We can't use the N-word, but uh, under certain circumstances like this, I guess it's uh, not foreboding. That was interesting. All uh, the different concepts, I like that. Talk about, you know, really that money is what drives the society. And if you don't have any, you're pretty much, you know, don't have any chances to really do anything or have a good life. I can understand where he's coming from and, um, and I don't like it, I, you know, it's pretty much the same thing that we've been dealing with all along. I've been dealing with this kind of thing all my life, so it's nothing new. Very upsetting. And I think that what makes it um, even more upsetting is that so much of it is so correct. And, you know, we, we kind of act like racism doesn't exist and or we bury our heads in the sand about it. This I don't like. I thought we had made progress, very frankly, but uh, it's just disappointing. It's a very derogative term, okay? And it's not accepted by black people to be using that word these days. And we still have all sorts of forms of slavery right now. For him to put this out without explaining what he's doing, I don't like it. They've got a monkey looking person. They've got cotton. They've got burlesque. Why is that popular? Why is that? It seems to be the antithesis of what it should be. So that was the new music video for the song The Story of OJ by rapper Jay-Z. That was Jay-Z, the Beyonce's husband. Yeah, he just put out a new, um, I guess they're still calling it an album. Before we talk about what he said about this, what do you think the imagery and lyrics were trying to convey? I don't think it was conveying, as far as I was concerned, it wasn't conveying much to me. There's still uh, enormous uh, Prejudice. Trying to convey that no matter what kind of black person you are, it's, things still don't go well for you. It looked like a cartoon from the 30s when those, when those really overt stereotypes were being used. He's really saying what the truth is about the matter. 
and it's the truth that nobody wants to talk about. So I say good for him for putting it out, uh, out there. There are different types of minorities that are black. You're still um, looked at if you're lighter to be a little bit better and treat a little bit better. And there's so there's a little bit of inner racism within the African-American community, which I really find fascinating. Some of us are raised in this country and we have parents that teach us um, when we do make money, how to save money, how to budget money, how to spend money. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people in this country that have never learned that. So even if they get very wealthy, uh, they don't know how to budget, they don't know how to spend, they don't know how to save. They might spend it frivolously, uh, irresponsibly, and before you know it, they can be broke again. Things haven't changed a lot since those days. We're pretty much dealing with uh, tokens to make it look like we're doing better. You get a few famous people like OJ that make it look like all blacks are doing well now when they really aren't. So shortly after its release, Jay-Z stated that the song is about what it means to be successful and black in America. Okay, that's not what I got. <laughs> I got that it, no matter what you did, you were unsuccessful. The song in many ways may be trying to advise people to be responsible and smarter with their money as it can be difficult to maintain success or know what to do with it when you're black in America. Do you think that Jay-Z was able to get his point across in the song and video? Uh, I got a little bit of that but not really. It's a good message that you have to struggle to be successful. I guess his message was it's harder if you're black to be successful. A lot of people pick up on it, yes. A lot would. But the older people will not pick up on that, I know. Because they hate the word. They hate even even these rappers using it. I think he was able to, but it just depends on, on if you have an open mind. Because if you didn't have an open mind, you right away you'd start getting offended and you'll miss the whole concept of what he's trying to do. I got it. I didn't like the way he did it exactly because I don't like those images. I mean, I grew up with the images like that and uh, being seen as that. So it it's hurtful. Now the song has received some backlash with quite a few people saying that he shouldn't be using this racial imagery. While there are others who have come to Jay-Z's defense claiming that he is using common stereotypes to highlight his message on race. Uh, I guess that's what he's trying to do but I find it offensive. So why do you think Jay-Z made this choice to use this imagery? He's trying to get to the certain population, I suppose. He's accepted, period, because he's a billionaire. He can get the message out, but you gotta get out the right way. He has a deep, deep feeling about this particular subject, and he wanted to express it. And from that standpoint, I say go ahead. I just don't happen to like it, and that is my right. One way of exposing um, the, the discrepancies in society is by ridiculing something and making it uh, outrageously silly, but it makes it also very crystal clear what's really going on here. We need to like go back and look at what was going on in the 60s and people were fighting for civil rights and for voting rights and for everyone to be treated with respect. And I feel that this is just so disrespectful to me, it's a step backwards. I was in the South in the 60s and it was very, it was frightening. I really, really think when it is controversial, people really pay attention and that's when you get the feedback. Smart marketing, because now people are all, all talking about it, whether they like it or not, they're talking about it. Finally, do you feel as an elder that when it comes to musical artists that this is an effective way to bring up issues and start conversations? It's an effective way to bring up conversations. It's the type of world we live in, I'm entitled to my opinion, the next person's entitled to their opinion. I think for many people, it's probably highly relatable and it's meaningful to them and, it's, and it did what he wanted to do. The elder people are not gonna accept this. I know they will not, not accept it because it's, all derogatory from a standpoint of not being explained. I think anything that starts conversations is good. You know, if people could just stay calm and relate to each other and talk about these things without getting emotional about it and really communicate, um, we could all make this a better planet. Thanks for watching this episode of Elders React. New episodes almost every day, so subscribe. Let us know in the comments what we should react to next. Thanks for watching. Bye.